but more than that you ought to be in him as the members of the head all that is in you must be incorporated in him and so we're constantly being fed all through our lives with the Eucharist and you know we have to have this consciousness that if you don't feed a child what happens the child dies doesn't it feed a child a little bit the child might live but doesn't grow very well feel the child well child grows and develops to its full potentiality. And it's the same with the Eucharist. You know, when people tell me, I come to church, I'm not being fed, I kind of agonize because people don't understand. They are being fed. Being fed with the God food of the God man, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're raised with our consciousness of what being fed, then the power of what being fed and the full fruition of the Eucharist comes into our life and strengthens us, renews us, and transforms us. He says, there will be no true life for you except in him. Apart from him, you'll find only destruction and death. Let him be the only source of your movements of the actions and the strength of your life. As St. Paul says, none of us is our own master in life or in death. He says, while we live response to the Lord and when we die, we are his servants. And so, our Lord, our Eucharistic Lord must be our life. He must be our one, our heart, our life, and our all. And so all the graces that we receive, baptism, confirmation, holy orders, marriage, all these graces of the sacraments received are strengthened and nourished through our Lord Jesus Christ in the, in the Blessed Sacrament because the Blessed Sacrament by definition is a sacrament of nourishment provided of course that we receive him and adore him in a state of grace. We can say then that when we adore our Lord Jesus that we are making a visit to our divine cardiologist. And when we make our visit to the divine cardiologist, that will heal us much more in many ways, because why? So many of our sicknesses are because we feel we're not loved, isn't it? See? And the more we come into contact with God's love with his divine cardiologist, the more we are healed and renewed. And so how can we maximize our visits to this divine cardiologist during our hours of adoration. Well, when you come in the presence of a person that you really love, what do you do? Do you look all over? Are you distracted? No. You are focused. You look at every word and every nuance, expression, not only their speech, but also of their body and their face. And with the same thing is true with our Lord Jesus Christ. You must totally focus on our Lord Jesus Christ. We meditate much, speak little. It's the silence of adoration in which our Lord Jesus Christ speaks to us most powerfully. We come in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. What do you want me to do? Hear my problems, hear my issues. Here's my situation, my family. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to handle this? You know, I like to tell people that when i on the road many weeks of the year, especially during Lent, I'm on the weeks 8, 10, 12 weeks in a row, come back home. I usually leave in the winter and come back home in the spring, every year. And I'm tired and I'm out of sorts. I come and I adore Lord Jesus Christ. It's the first thing I do in our, adoration, in our chapel. And I go in like a lion, go out like a lamb. And why? Because you just spent an hour of adoration with the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And not only our sins, but our worries, our anxieties, 
our lack of understanding of how to handle these things. Because who better than the seat and the source of wisdom himself to not to that Gordian knot of problems that we all have and suffer. And so during Eucharistic adoration, we can raise up our hearts to the Sacred Heart and say, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me, my Lord and my God. I do help, Lord, help my unbelief. Because a lot of times it's our own stubbornness, our own pride, and our own lack of patience that prevents the full love of our Lord Jesus Christ from coming in the hearts. Love is pouring out from him, from entering totally and fully into our hearts. When you look at the crucifix, Mother Teresa said, she said, you understand how much Jesus loved you. When you look at the sacred hosts, you understand how much Jesus loves you now. She says, our lives must be interwoven. Notice that expression? Our lives must be interwoven with the Holy Spirit. Now, ladies, you know, you know, you make the sweaters and everything. What happens when you have a little strand and you pull it? Right? The whole thing comes around. That's the way and the identification we should have with the Holy Eucharist. Our lives must be inseparable with the Holy Eucharist. You know, I've been accused of having an obsession with the Holy Eucharist. Yeah, I'm guilty. My life is Jesus in the Holy Eucharist and vice versa. You know, the old faithful from the first three centuries, the old martyrs, they said, they stood up before the magistrates, the civil magistrates who says, deny Jesus, don't receive the Eucharist. And they say, I can't do that because if I can't have the Eucharist, I will die. And they received the Eucharist to strengthen them to approach their martyrdom, and even joyfully. And that's the strength we get when our lives are just totally identified, totally one with our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. And as a member of the mystical body, you are. Because you are the body of Christ. You are the members of Christ. Christ is the head, working, just as the blood throws through our brains, just as the brain sends the commands through the rest of our body, so is our Lord Jesus Christ present permeates each and every one of us as members of his mystical body receive our Lord and adore him. And once we raise our consciousness of this, then we really understand the love and the power of his love and the healing and renewal in the consciousness of that love that Jesus Christ has for each and every one of us. Finally, Mother Teresa concluded her, many, her observation of many decades of adoration of our Lord Jesus Christ by saying, through Mary, the cause of our joy, you discovered, you discovered that no more are you on earth welcomed, no more on earth are you loved, no more on earth are you wanted, than by Jesus Christ really and truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. He is there waiting just for you. Let that sink in. No more are you wanted and loved and invited than our Lord Jesus Christ right here present in the Blessed Sacrament finding that total peace and serenity that the world cannot give, and that friendship, divine friendship, that only our Lord Jesus Christ can give.